Hello and welcome to this week's Australian Stock Market Report. Now this week we're going to look at the RBA interest rate decision on Tuesday and inflation. Then we'll get into the Australian stock market so I can share with you my thoughts on where it's heading along with answering your questions and looking at stocks for you. Hello, I'm Dale Gillen, the Chief Analyst here at Wealth Within and we're Australia's most trusted stock market educators. Now, before we move on, thank you for showing your support for our channel and hitting that subscribe button. Now, remember, as you subscribe, click the bell on the right of it so you keep up to date with our latest videos. Also, remember to tune into our live Australian stock market show, which is on every Tuesday, 7 to 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Time. Now, this is a show where you get to ask us, the stock market education and trading experts, to look at your favorite stocks and answer all of your questions. Now, with the Australian stock market falling over the last few weeks, there has been a lot of talk around consumer confidence and inflation as the possible causes. Now, with the RBA set to meet for the first time on Tuesday, the focus is on whether they will raise interest rates and how this will affect the stock market. Well, according to the RBA, inflation is currently sitting at 3.5%. Now, to put this into perspective, at the start of this century, inflation was 1.8%, and has been as high as 5%, which was in September 2008, and the lowest in June 2020, when it fell to minus 0.3 of a percent. Now, according to Trading Economics, the Australian inflation rate has averaged around 4.86% from 1951 to 2021, yet we are now at the highest level of inflation in the last 13 years since 2008. Now, consequently, many are talking about raising interest rates to slow the economy and curb inflation. Now, right now, given the current COVID situation, I don't think it's really a solid argument for raising interest rates, although I do believe they will rise this year. That said, I don't believe the rise will be anything significant as the RBA knows that the current factors driving up inflation are only temporary. Regardless of your view on whether interest rates will rise this week, the fact is that the market is falling. So understanding why is of least importance. What you do need to know or what you do need to focus on is whether to hold your position in the market, reduce it or exit altogether. Now, in my opinion, investors are far too focused on what the index is or will be doing rather than focusing on their own investments. Right now, I am not focusing my attention on the market or interest rates, but instead on some of the top 50 stocks on our market, as I believe they will present some great buying opportunities in the next few weeks. Now it's time we looked at the market, and as usual, we'll start with what were the best and worst performing sectors last week. Once again, all of the sectors in the Australian stock market were down with the best performing sectors, including consumer staples. And that was down 0.04%, followed by utilities down 0.51%, and energy down 1.17%. The worst performing sectors included information technology down 8.04%, followed by materials down 3.46%, and healthcare, that was down 3.05%. Now, the best performers in the S&P ASX top 100 stocks included Rio Tinto, and that's up 4.64%. Followed by Osnet Services up 3.19% and BHP that was up 2.67%. The worst performing stocks included Evolution Mining down 16.06%, followed by Mineral Resources that was down 15.81% and WiseTech Global was down 15.35%. Now before we get into taking a look at the charts, remember if you want to understand the stock market and have more control over your trading, then you can get a copy of my first book, How to Beat the Managed Funds by 20% for free. All you do is pay the shipping. Now, to get your copy, visit our website, wealthwithin.com.au. It's on the homepage. So you just click on the button on the homepage, or you can give us a call on 1300 858 272. Now, just a little bit of a note, people have been trying to buy my second book, Accelerate Your Wealth, and thinking that is free. No, that's not. That's around $27, $28 for that one. It is how to Beat the Managed Funds, my first book. Go to the homepage, click on the button to buy it, and it will be just pay the shipping, you get it for free. If you're in doubt, just ring 1300 858 272. Now, moving on, what do I expect in the market moving forward? Well, let's get into the charts for our S&P 500 All Ordinaries Index update for this week. We'll also answer your questions and look at the stocks that you've chosen for me. 
Well, wasn't last week a fun week on the Australian stock market? I know a lot of people were questioning about what to do with their stocks. And I know on our Tuesday night live show, we had a lot of questions from people with stocks they own falling away and worried about whether they should be selling or holding or, you know, what is the story going on and how far the market is going to fall. And, and that's really what I was trying to say in the first part of uh, this um, report today is really you don't ever have to worry about the market because you don't buy the market you buy stocks and so all you need to do is focus on the stocks that you own you don't need to worry about what the market's doing or who's saying what about the market or how you know what's driving the market you don't really need to know a lot of that all you need to do is look at the stocks you own um, and then make sure you've got a, a line in the sand or an exit strategy as we talk about to make sure that if it does fall below the point that you have deemed that it's okay for you to exit that stock and then you exit it. That's really what you do. A lot of people panic because of that fear of the unknown. They just don't know. They don't know how far the stock is going to fall. Uh, they don't know how mar far the market's going to fall. So people have this fear in their mind. But it seems to be when the market's bullish, everybody just is becomes an expert and they just buy stocks and they go up. But it's only when they start to come down and you actually really know what you actually know. And if you don't know enough, and it's a really, really big, um, how I'd say, it's a really big, you know, poke in the ribs to say, well, hang on a sec, if you're worried about your stocks right now, that means you do not know enough and that you do need to learn something. And that's why I implore people to at least buy one of my books because it'll help you understand how the stocks move and what you need to do, but do with buying, selling and managing your portfolio. Because I'm serious when I say people don't ring me or ask me questions when the stocks they own are going up. It's generally, like I get the majority of the questions when the market's bearish and their stocks are falling away and people are going, what do I do? And how far is a stock going to go? And it's almost like how, how long is a piece of string? Unless you put a lot of effort into it, it's a little bit harder for people to determine how far a stock will run in either direction. And I'm not going to do that on this report. I can do it, but I'm not going to do it on these reports. That's the stuff I do for our clients. But let's go and have a look at the charts and see what's happened with our market last week. Now, Friday was a, a day where the market it did bounce up. And I'm going to bring up the um, the monthly chart and you can see here this is what I was saying early last week I was saying the market will probably go down to you know around that sort of seven thousand points to around um, around that six sort of thousand eight hundred I thought it would go into that area and you can see here if I move this over well, let me just delete it over you can see here I'll get rid of that one so it's a little bit easier to see so there is the current month at this point in time so if I use from the close of the prior month you can see right now we're down about 6.63% down about 9.48 percent and the market will generally fall 8 to 12 percent when it does fall into it now let's just get rid of that and I'll show you how far it is off that all-time high which we had earlier in the month I'll just put the lock on it and you can see it was down nearly 11.62 percent down there as of uh, earlier last week and it's come back to close there so far at 7266.3 points but was a low of 7031 so I nearly hit my top end of my target there at that 7800 points and as I said it could go to around about 6800 points and that's where I'm projecting it probably could go now I'm not saying it is going to go down to that point I'm just saying this is what probability suggests may happen and this is what a lot of people um, don't do in the marketplace they'll see the market fall away it'll get to the uh, a projected level that somebody might say and then people jump in and and right now I'd, I'm not sure I'm it's everything about the market is confirmation not speculation and I'll I'll tell you a little bit of a story it's like when we when we're kids we're taught you know when we go out to cross the road we are taught to look to the left look to the right look to the left again and then walk across the road if it's all clean. Now, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, it's the other way. <laughs> you, you gotta look the other way because the cars are going, especially in America and places like that where your cars are coming from a different direction. But you, we do that because we know it's safe. Now, in the market, we see people just buy the dips or they jump in because they think something's cheap. So they looked at basically they're just looking to the left and then just running out and, and you could be running into a Mack truck. So right at the moment, if we look at uh, the last day, here's Friday, there you can see the market was quite strong on Friday up with a range of 165 points. But what was interesting to me, and if you have a look at the volume, this is volume down the bottom. And if I put the little cross here on, you can see the volume there. There's only one bar higher than that. So this is the highest volume. If we keep going back, you can see how high that volume is. It's right back to September 2020, right over here. 
that we've got really high volume. And then September last year, we had some really, really high volume. So we've got some really high volume this in uh, currently in this month. And obviously with the all time high, this is, sorry, this last week, sorry, not last month. Um, here's the bar here, the volume for that all time high, but you can see it's really, really low, but not unusual for a January. Last, two weeks ago, it was pretty normal that uh, week ending Friday the 21st of January, relatively normal um, in terms of that. So it'll be interesting to see what happens this week. This could be just a lot of people jumping in, trying to bargain pick if that makes sense, or buying the dips as a lot of people talk about. I'm not convinced, and like I was saying before, I wanna make sure I've got confirmation that this is the low. Could it be the low? Yes, it's possible. Is it the low? That's yet to be, yet to be confirmed. So um, Janine and I'll be watching closely this week because it is possible our market will go down a little bit further. Uh, we may have a week up and then it might go down for a couple of weeks down to 6,800 points. So right now, just to be a little bit careful, but as I was saying a little bit earlier in my report, uh, I am excited about the market. I am looking at the top 50 stocks on the marketplace because there's some good looking stocks there setting themselves up for buyers. So you'd be wise to be you know, putting the time into planning uh, what you might be doing moving forward because I still think the rest of this year is great. Do I think the market's gonna crash? No, I still do not think the market's gonna crash our market or the US market. I think we've got um, more of a medium term rise. I think we'll resume our bull market. I think our market will outperform pretty much the US market over the next couple of years. That's my take. Uh, and we should put, really rise up into mid-decade, maybe 2024, 2025, um, and before we're having another bigger correction than what we're actually seeing right now. So it'll be the next big one, which will probably be more like 15 to 20, 25%, or maybe even bigger than that. It could be a, a crash type of situation there, but I'm not super worried about that now. And we'll talk about that more as we get closer to it. But right now I'm quite happy with the market. As I said, all you need to do is make sure you have a line in the sand in case the stocks you own fall a little bit further. But now's the time to get into our questions from you. The first question that we do have today is from Shane, who says, thanks for another great show. I've been looking to build a position in AD8 and was hoping to get your thoughts on a possible entry range. Thanks again from Shane. Um, I'm not actually gonna give you an entry range. This is really what you need to be doing for yourself. It's, for example, as an expert, we give you the best of what we give you today based on the knowledge that we have today. So I might go, oh, look, I think it's probably a good buy at around this point, but then tomorrow I might change my opinion because of more data coming in, or it may sort of slowly move to that point over the next couple of weeks. Um, but then by that time, I've also changed my mind because of new data coming out. It really is up to you. You need to know why you're buying, why you're selling, where you're buying, where you're selling, how to manage your money. That's really what you need to do. But I'll go and have a look at the stock and have a look and give you my uh, opinion on it. And part of the reason probably why you're asking me is because it's been falling so hard. You can see here, big, big fall, and you're saying, where is the, a good entry range into this stock? And right now, the age-old adage, like I was saying before, is you, you just wait for confirmation of the move down the stop because you can see here, um, um, if I go to here, you can see um, as of one point this month, it was down 34.97%. So has it stopped falling? I don't know. And unless I do a lot of work on this stock, I won't know. And you can see here, only the last few weeks, it's fallen 31.55% in price since sort of mid-December. This is looking okay because it, it did push down and come back, but then so did the market. Is Right now, is this going to fall further? I would suggest it's the probability. When a stock is moving like this, probability if you think of it like a pendulum is swung to the bearish side and the probability that it will continue to fall remains until it doesn't anymore and i think well you know you go well that makes sense Dale, doesn't it it's going to fall until it doesn't fall anymore correct that's why we need to wait for the market or the stock to tell us so if it falls through this sort of level through here that 675 then you're probably going to find it's going to go through to five dollars but that's it's still not me telling you where to buy this stock and you know right now when we're looking at this all-time high there at eleven dollars um, and one cent so probably wouldn't surprise me if it got down into that sort of five dollar fifty sort of five dollars five dollar fifty range uh, over the coming um, weeks and or months but it doesn't necessarily as again it's not a position that I'm saying if it hits those levels uh, you should buy that no right now you stay up until it hits the bottom and then it starts to move up and tells you that it stopped falling down 
then that's the range that you would buy from. But thank you very much. And, and I'm glad you do enjoy our shows and our reports, uh, as I said. But uh, it really is that you need to make sure you have rules of entry and exit for yourself and making sure you understand it. But right now, I think I'd stay out of ADA. The next uh, question that we have is, I'm going to try and say this right. I think it's Valium3165. It's a nice name isn't it um who says hi dal i love the video would you mind covering some lithium stocks like pls or cxo i've been watching pls since it was two dollars and only recently decided to jump in at three dollars is there much upside left in lithium stocks in general they've going, been going gangbusters for two years and there are a lot of players in the market surely the supply will catch up with the demand soon and prices will drop you're pretty much uh, pretty much good thinking i like that i'm not going to do two stocks i'm going to do one we'll go and have a look at um i think it's pls i'm going to go and have a look at that was the first one you mentioned with lithium stocks everything runs for a, a period of time whether it's iron ore lithium you know you name it it runs for a period with with, with um resources type stock so they could run for two years they could run for five six or seven years so right now the we're still not 100 percent sure how far lithium will actually run and obviously you know as things get too expensive it's just a natural thing with um, anything in life and i remember years and years ago when oil was like way over a hundred dollars a barrel and all the uh, people on the tv uh, all the um, experts were saying oil was going to 200 dollars a barrel i remember being on sky I'm saying, no, it's going to halve, I think. And, the, and people are going, well, how? It's a diminishing resource, blah, blah, blah. You know, it can only go up if there's less of it. It can only go up because of scarcity. I went, no, but uh, we, we adapt. So if something gets too expensive, we adapt. We go to some other form of energy. So if lithium gets expensive and the supply is not there and the keeps, prices keep going up, there'll be scientists and, and inventors out there that'll be finding something else to use other than lithium that'll do the job that we need lithium to do, if that makes sense, and, and fill the gap that, there. And that'll be cheaper um, to produce, obviously, and then things will switch around for that and then lithium will get cheaper again. So right now, do I think lithium has had its run? Probably short term. Um, I think we may see some short term weakness on it uh, that just means to be careful with lithium stocks and you are right they have gone gangbusters over the last couple of years but don't think they're going to do that this year or into the into the next two three four five years they will tell you what's going on and lithium will as well but right now they are looking a bit overpriced um, and starting to come back down but let's go and have a quick look at pls and you can see um i'll bring that up on the screen now you can see it's been as you can see they're big 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 gang, gangbusters as you were saying so you know even going looking at um there's june last may last Last year it was only a dollar and obviously it's gone up to over three dollars eighty so looking at this so uh, oh, i shouldn't have clicked on that dale let me just go and put on to where's there's where is it november there's the end of december last year so currently it's up 270 percent in in the year so 347 percent it was up um pretty much um well not for the whole year but that's obviously to this current month the higher there in january three dollars 89 it's looking a little bit weaker it's going obviously it's reversed through here it's dropped down in i would suggest it's probably got a little bit more to go i'd say you might even find it's going to come back down to this two dollar two dollar fifty range into this sort of sideways ish mesh over here but right now stay out of it if you're not in this stock at the moment i would suggest stay out of it until it gives you a signal to say it stopped falling. If you are in this stock at the moment, it's pretty much just coming back to roughly at this point in time, roughly where its momentum is. You can see roughly that's the momentum of this stock. It moves away, comes back, moves away, comes back again. These little trend lines that I'm using, and this is I'm using the trend line tool, not drawing a trend line. This is just a momentum roughly. And when you see stocks blow away from that, they always come back to it. They blow away and they come back to it. So it wouldn't surprise me if it came back right down into this sort of 240, 250, 260 sort of range over the coming weeks before it found some support and took off again. But as I said, if you are in this stock, make sure that you know where you have an exit strategy or where is a point that you say, oh, I'm out of it now. And if you're not in it, just stay right out of it at the moment until it gives you a signal that it's a good time to buy that. But thank you for asking the question. Now we've got a question from... Uh, I'm not sure what your first name is, but C. Maris, I'm not sure what your first name is. It'd be nice to have people's first names to say hello, uh, what your name is. But they, they say, thanks, Dale. I enjoyed this video very much. was wondering whether you could give me your view on Linus. It has had a good run since March 2020 with a few lateral movements, and it seems it's now hitting a strong natural resistance level. What are your thoughts in terms of buying the stock? Thank you very much. So let's go and have a look at Linus. I'll just bring that up on the screen right now while I put my 
um, glasses on. It's had a massive run again, just like PLS. It's had this beautiful big, big, big run over the last couple of years. It's in rare earths, obviously. Anything in sort of that battery technology with lithium rare earths, all those sorts of stuff has done really, really well. My comments are pretty much exactly the same if I use my little um, trend lining tool. Again, you can see the same sort of thing. So at this point in time, it's probably just coming back into the realms of here. So it coming back to $8, maybe even to $7 into that sort of range would not surprise me. Is it a buy right now? No, it's not a buy right now. I'd just be sitting back waiting. Um, it's done that big rise right up there through to the mid, mid January. The last two weeks been a bit bearish. Um, could it fall further than these sorts of levels? Absolutely, it could fall. It could fall. You can see here, it's not, um, not I was, going to, I was going to use a double negative. Um, you can see it's prone to some big falls. If you use you know, this little tool, you can see back there in June 2019, it fell 67% into 2020. So it has some really, really big falls. And this is what you need to be worried about. When you want to play with stocks like this, they are volatile. There's a 50% fall. Just here over a matter of weeks, here's another 46% fall over here. A matter of, well, I've got it on the wrong spot, but you can see there's like over 60% it fell there. Um, there we go, down to that one, where it is, 67% down to there. And this is the last six years-ish, roughly. It's had one, two, three, four, and this is number five, so since about 2015, so five, six years. So it's going to have a big fall, and if it, this thing fell 50%, you're talking about somewhere around about this $556 range. So would it surprise me for it to go down here? No, it wouldn't. Would it surprise me to other stocks like this, like PLS, to drive down to these sorts of levels? No, it wouldn't because they are more volatile. And this is why as investors and or traders, we really do need to understand how much are we prepared to lose? Because um, as I talk about in my book, it's what you do not lose that determines how much you make. And really what I want to say about that is, if I lose 10%, my, my investments only need to go back up 11% because of, before I break even. If I lose 50%, my, my investments now need to double just to get back up to breaking even. So if you've got a stock of $10 and it falls to $5, that $5 has to double before you get back to $10. So the longer you hold it while it's falling away, the harder it is for you to get back up to break even. Now I know you don't want to break even, so that's why we say to people, cut losses short, let profits run. But what's cut losses short? You know, you've got to leave the stock room to fall away and move in its natural rhythm. And we need to do that as investors and as traders. But now's the time for active investors and traders. It's not the time for buy and hold. There are times for, there are times for buy and hold. They're very few and far between. But some people who do want to buy and hold some stocks, and we've seen that with Bitcoin of late, you know, um, if you bought Bitcoin last January, now in a loss situation. If you've bought it in February, you're definitely in a loss situation, a much bigger loss situation. Situation. So, and people have bought Bitcoin a couple of years ago now into a loss situation if they're holding because it's a volatile type of um, market to be into. So you need to be careful about what you're buying. So if you want to buy and hold, that means you need to be, have more consistently good gross stocks, not volatile stocks that move up and down like these sorts of stocks. So just understanding the market you're in, what you're trading, and then how you manage that. But right now, as I said, I think this stock has probably got a bit more downside maybe a lot more downside, but we need to see that um, and wait for it. So if you're not in this stock at the moment, you stay out of it. And if you are in it, you should have a line in the center where you might like to exit it. Now, the next question we have is from somebody called Hayden. So hello, Hayden. Thank you for giving us a question today. He said, hey guys, love the videos. Just got one quick question for Dale. Watch your video on Monday and was just wondering why you would want to exit on FMG and BHP considering they are valued a stock and pay a dividend. Just wondering if you're implying that statement more for the longer, for the trader or the long-term investor. I'm a long-term investor. Um, basically, the answer to that is you heard what you wanted to hear in that, not what I was actually said. I didn't say sell BHP or Rio. Janine and I didn't do that on Tuesday either. What we're saying is the stocks are going down at the moment and you need to make the line in the sand like we keep talking about. Often when we do videos and it's so, so, so common, people hear what they want to hear. I could say to them, I think the market's going to go down um, for a few weeks and people panic and think it's a crash. You know, they do that. I get comments about people saying, well, you said this stock's going to fall away. Um, you know, I have to sell my stock. No, we didn't. Janine and I are really, really careful about what we say and what we don't say. And we don't tell people to buy. We don't tell people to sell. We just say to you what we think the stock is. Right now, we said, we said there's possible more downside on BHP and Fortescue. We didn't say 
to sell. We said you just need to make sure that you've got, you're protected yourself and you know where you might want to sell. Um, we didn't tell people to sell. Um, BHP went up the other day, actually, as you can see, it was one of the better stocks on our marketplace. We do like BHP, we do like Fortescue, we do like um, Rio, we do like those stocks and we do like materials moving forward and we like energy moving forward. But always think about what we're actually saying and pull it apart a little bit and think of what we're saying. I know our students, they know really what we're saying because they read between the lines of what Janine and I are saying all of the time because this is YouTube, it's free. You get to watch Janine and I for free and we get to ask us questions and we give you our, our best um, on those. But we don't go super, super detailed and put a lot of stuff on charts, as I've said before. You know, to do so would be a lot of people would start spitting their heads. We want to have people who are more medium to long-term traders like yourself. We want to help people getting started. We don't, we're not about just looking after traders who know a bit of technical analysis. We're very much for helping people get in the market and having positive experiences. And that's why we say, wait for a stock to tell you to buy, wait for the stock to tell you to sell and looking at direction. But thank you for asking the question. Now I've got a question from Talia who says, hi Dale, thanks for a great show as always. As a beginner and a long-term buy and hold investor, is it okay to buy an index or diversified ETF? If you want to, that's fine, that's your choice. I don't like them, never have, never will. Um, but it's your choice if you want to do that. Um, and the, the reason why, there's a couple of reasons why Janine and I hate index ETFs, and I will say, well, hate's a big word, isn't it? We dislike index ETFs. I'm not putting a blanket, and this is where people say to me, Dale, you don't like ETFs. No, I do like ETFs. I just don't like index ETFs, huge difference. If you're into and uh, you get an ETF that's in a specialized area like robotics or artificial intelligence or um, you know, maybe even a rare earths or a emerging companies type ETFs, I don't have problems with those sorts of ETFs because they're very specialist and, and people may not have expertise in those areas. So buying individual stocks could be higher risk. But with an in index ETF is put yourself to sleep and come back 10 years later and, and you probably made some money. That's really what it's about. All they're doing is matching the index. And you can do that yourself with zero effort almost. All you need to do is get my book, my first one for free, pay the shipping, get it at home, read it, and then do it all yourself. And all you need to do is really own the top 10 stocks or 10 of the top 20 stocks on the market and hold them and you'll have more money than an index ETF. It's just that simple. You'll be able to compound, you'll be able to get your dividends and compound and buy more, and in 10 years time, you would have outperformed an index ETF. It's, it's just, an index ETF is just another form of managed fund and, and doing it yourself by buying the top 10 stocks on the market, you'll beat that. And whether it's the Australian market or the US market, the top 20 stocks in the US market drove that market or are driving that market. The top 20 stocks in Australia drive our market. So, uh, but again, if you like them, I don't have a problem with them. The problem we're gonna see, and when we have a big crash on our market, I'm not saying our market's crashing now again, so please do not think I'm doing that. Eventually, when we do have a crash, I'm pretty sure index ETFs are going to be part of the problem. And that's part of the reason why Janine and I don't like them. There's going to be a real big squeeze on those because everybody panics generally in a big crush. Um, and there's going to be everybody trying to get out and then we're probably going to get the same situation we had in the GFC where a lot of stuff happened to retail investors because the big end of town were losing money and they just shut down, stopped people getting out of their managed funds and a whole range of different things. So, the, and uh, and believe me, there's over trillions of dollars in index ETS in Australia right now and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the bigger it gets, the higher the risk gets. And that's really what Janine and I say, buy the stocks yourself, yourself because you can always sell them at any time. But thank you for asking the question. Thanks everybody who posted a question there. And, and if you're sitting there, and you have a question for me, well, it doesn't really get answered until you ask it. So first thing you need to do is public, sub publicly subscribe to the channel to show your support and give us a big thumbs up. Um, whether it's today's show or tomorrow night's show, give us a big thumbs up. Then just type your question below. Where, where, again, the section below is for people to ask questions of us. There's not a chat forum for everybody just to go wildly chat. And if you've got a stocks that you want to tell everybody else to buy, I'll delete it. It's not for you to ramp stocks or talk about stocks that you own. It's for people to ask questions and, and make conversations. So, you know, I'm happy to answer all the sorts of questions that are below, but please re remember it's not a chat. If you want to go to a chat forum, go to the chat forums and, and play in there. But uh, this is really for people who want to understand the market and do. So please hit the subscribe button. Now give us a big thumbs up. Also, you know, put your questions down below. Now remember we do, uh, on this channel, we do these Monday market reports each and every week. We also do our live stream, which is on 
tomorrow night, Tuesday night, 7 to 8 p.m. Australian Eastern time. So hit the subscribe button now, click the bell on the right of it, so you know when we upload and go live. That's it for me. I'm Dale Gillam, the Chief Analyst here at Wealth with Goodbye, good luck, and good trading.